up, Rangers? Welcome to the Geek Chest. My name's Steve. Oh, we we doing? Are you, are you sure we're doing this? Hell yeah. My name's Arnaz. And today we got something special because we have a review for a movie that isn't even out yet. Oh, we're finally doing that review, uh, Ape vs. Monster. That movie's uh, been out forever, no. And I found it at Walmart. Of course you found it at Walmart. At $9. Funny enough, this movie, I guess, is also going to show up at Walmart because it's being distributed by the same company that did... Uh, got my phone here and then cut away from what I was... Steve and his Windows 98 phone. Oh, yeah, make fun of me. God Riga versus King Oga. That abysmal movie. So, wait, wait, it's the same people? <laughs> Not the same people that made the movie, but it's the same people that distribute it. Oh, okay. Well, I can take that then. That's okay. So, look forward to the movie coming out. Uh, he said it should be re- releasing in January. Uh, but what, we're, what we watched was Uktena. Horned monstrosity. Horned monstrosity. Horned monstrosity. So, oh, I get it now. The name because of the... Yeah, yeah. The monster has a horn. <laughs> yeah. And he's a monster. All right, Steve, you go off. You go ahead. Okay, so one, of us, one thing I want to reiterate right off the get-go is this is a very low-budget film. One thing that actually helped me appreciate the movie more was... He also did a behind the scenes and talked about pretty much the process of how going about it. Because essentially it was one guy, um, his kid that made the outfit, and then pretty much whoever they could get to kind of help out with the movie. So, it's a very low budget movie. I would say probably more low budget than the God Raga. Damn. So, I will state that right off the get-go. <laughs> so, going into this movie, I already expected what I seen. Once I heard the, who the distributor, I'm like, alright, so I'm in for a ride. <laughs> so, uh, essentially what the movie is, it, the, the premise, the monster was sealed away by Native Americans. Because it was like a Native American that got turned into a monster, a rampage, and then they trapped it inside of a cave. Well, nuclear testing, yada, 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 the monster comes out. I, I guess I can say I appreciate where the monsters, uh, monster comes from or like the origin of it because it's different. It's not something like that we usually get these days, you know. I was actually, that was the first thing I noticed that I actually enjoyed was it wasn't just like monster came out of the ocean. Granted, it's still nuclear testing. I think we maybe could have worked around that. But it's still like, you don't see like the Native American giant monster film. Yeah, and that's what I liked, that it was like Native American giant monster movie. Which I thought was cool. Um, outside of that, I think the premise overall works for the movie. Oh, okay, I guess I'll start. First, going into the movie, I understand what it was going to be. Okay, I knew it was going to be bad, you know. Well, bad in the sense of you're expecting yes. a certain quality out of the film. Yeah, I was expecting one out of ten, you know. Already said low budget movie, and I really appreciate the background of the monster, where the monster come from. Um, few confusing things was like the appearance of the monster. At some scenes, it's super tiny, human size. Next scene, it's destroying the buildings, you know, and it's just like the transaction from A to B. Transition. Transition from A to B <laughs> was not clear. You know what I mean? Yeah, with the monster, there was, especially because there's a lot of green screen used in this movie. Oh, God, which, yeah. Which, again, to be expected, though, I would have still liked maybe to have seen some more real world spots. Because even some of the stuff that was green screen was kind of odd because it'd be like Sheriff's Office was green screen. Like, you could probably just, I, I'd expect them in these kind of movies where it just could have been some dude's house and you put something on the wall, you print it out. To make it seem kind of like a sheriff's office. I think I would appreciate it that more than the green screen. Because there was an excessive amount of it. Yeah. I will say that. Um, but the, with the green screen, that's when they use the monster, of course you're going to need that, especially when it's like rampaging through the city. Mm-hmm. You need something for the backdrop. But sometimes the scaling of the stuff that was in the background of that kind of screwed me up with trying to figure out the monster scaling. One thing I did like, though, is that you actually got to see the monster. Yep. Like, they weren't afraid to actually show it up, because, again, they actually made the suit. I actually think overall it turned out pretty well. I feel like they used that uh, T-Rex mask. 
behind the scenes, they literally bought a T-Rex mask and then just modified it. That's what I thought. It wasn't the one I thought it was, though. It was an old... It was oh, it's a, not it the one a, that we... It was, like a Hall- it was like a Halloween... Like something you pick up at Spirits, essentially. I was thinking it was literally like the Jurassic Park one because yeah. his mouth moved. So I was like, oh, that's like perfect. And you just modify that. But they modified that and then kind of made everything else mostly from scratch. I, the feet are like the fluffy monster slippers. Yeah. That were modified. And I like... Actually, again, watching the behind the scenes, actually, I got to appreciate the kind of like the construction of the monster. And then, like, it had hair, which is different. Well, it, the whole, the monster grew or became from a human, so. Well, then, I think, it, again, it kind of tie, helps tie it in to be more Native American. Because there wasn't really, like, a whole lot about the thing that initially looked like it. But you have, like, the long black hair, I think, kind of helped to relate it more. All right, I'll say something I liked. I liked those two construction guys. They were hilarious. They were <laughs> so bad that it was actually good. I will say, like, I actually kind of liked everybody acting for the most part. Because it was, like, it was just cheesy. Yeah. And, again, I, like, I will say, like, these kind of movies, I kind of appreciate it more. Because if you try to be super serious, but everything you, kind of looks... You can't pull it, it off. It's hard. Well, if you try to just have fun with it, which you can definitely tell they had a lot of fun with this. One thing I did not like, I hate to say this, but was like that flute playing guy. That was weird. Because I didn't quite understand that because he's like, he was playing at the beach. That's when the monster seemed kind of small. Yeah. But then he's like, oh, he sees it, but then just starts playing again. And then just scared. And that part was weird. <laughs> yeah. That was just like, I feel like that's one of the parts you could have cut out and you would have been okay. Yeah, because I think a lot of it was just there, to, again, to kind of help tie it in with everything. Then you tie it to a rock, throw it back in that cave. I will say the sound effect that threw me off the most was uh, when they went to go talk to Dr. Like, Professor Gecko. Love the names, by the way. <laughs> and it's like, it's the hot chick in the movie. So when they go in, they kind of do the pan up, and you just hear the... In the background. I was just like... Okay, that might be a little much, but I'll roll with it. I had to rewind it for a second because I was watching my phone. I'm like, was that something in the room? That was kind of funny. I will say the angle was kind of weird because it kind of stopped like at her stomach. Yeah. There was a few questionable choices that were made for this movie with the uh, whole, you know, shooting the movie and stuff like that. Some parts it seems like I think could have maybe had like a few, like maybe some retakes would have helped a little bit. Mm hmm. Some of the green screen, I will say, actually looked pretty solid, like the tank one. Because it was like the green screen, it was like the guy loading the tank, and then you had the actual actor sitting next to it. And it actually, it almost blended. I would say this, I appreciated the green screen tanks better than the actual toy tanks. You know, the whole scene with the toys. Alright, so I guess one of the main things you're going to be here is for the Monster Rampage. Of course, there's actually a decent amount of action in this. One thing I like is they didn't go too excessive in some of the CG, unlike with God Raga versus whatever his name was, where you couldn't even Jesus follow along Christ. with the action because there's just so much random particle, whatever they could find on Photoshop effect. And threw it in there. Going on. Like this stuff, it, it made sense for what it was. Maybe not the best at some points, but it made sense. And I can appreciate that. And again, they weren't afraid to show the monster. You got to see the monster actually, like, destroying buildings. I actually liked it when he was interacting with the one lady singing. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of funny. Also, like, the way that they had the monster's eyes change, depending on its mood. That was kind of cool. They put in effort. But it was like, um, they knew they couldn't pull off an A movie, so we're just going to have fun with the B movie thing. Yeah, and I think it does a pretty solid job at being a B movie. Because this would have been one of those movies, if it would have been, like, submitted for, like, G-Fest for, like, the fan video contest, I think that it, it would actually would have been pretty well received. Yeah. No, if I would have went to, like, Walmart and bought this, maybe be a little bit more upset. <laughs> but then again, yeah, you're kind of, if you're going to be going to buy those movies, you already, again, know what you're, you're getting into yeah. to begin with. You already know what you're expecting. This would be something I would love to watch on TV. This is like 1968 Godzilla, you know. Okay, not no. This is like this, like a uh, Reptilicus. <laughs> it's more. But I have to Bane. throw in the 68 Godzilla, Steve. <laughs> What's wrong with this? 
But six, you, you, that's the wrong one. That's destroy all monsters. I know. 67's the bad suit. I know! <laughs> I don't think you do. No, I like actually uh, destroy all monsters. Yeah, no, destroy all monsters is great. That's why I was confused. 67 is the one that's... Ooh. Eh, like the bugs are cool. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Kamakurus is neat. I always like Kamakurus. Kamanga, I take it or leave it, but Kamakurus is sweet. Kamanga, my mean foot up, yo. Gigantus in the English. Ugh. Um, so if you're looking for, uh, if you're gonna buy this movie, my suggestion is just expect to be. Mm. It's definitely gonna be on the lower scale of what you probably expect. Yeah. Just expect one, and you'll be surprised when you get like a three or four. Okay. But if you saw like the Godraga, Rega. Both names sound really similar, and you enjoyed those movies. This will be this kind of falls into the same boat, but again, I kind of like that they used a lot more practical stuff with the monster. Yeah, so it gets easier to follow because it was like with Rega, the monster you didn't really get to see, and it was just wishy washy. The first Rega actually isn't bad. No, I think the first one is best because again, you get to see it. They had fun with it. I enjoyed the that issue overall. was like with the first one is like you had like PlayStation One graphics, you know. Well, then, yeah, then the monster was kind of like stationary. Yeah, it was just kind of whatever. And then the third one was you couldn't tell what the hell was going on. But overall, I'd recommend checking it out still because again, like I personally, I like watching like the cheesy monster movies. This kind of falls into the same boat. Uh, if it wasn't for uh, I'm sending us the link for the movie. I would have probably shared it with some people to watch it, but yeah, I understand we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, we can't do that. So. Some people I think that would actually enjoy checking it out. So those people that would enjoy checking out, pick it up. It's worth it. It's it's dumb fun in a good way. Yeah, then it'll be it's a, be fairly inexpensive too when it comes out. Yeah, because those movies are usually delegated to the cheaper section of WalMarts and stuff like that. Anyways, but what do you guys think? Well, you guys haven't checked it out yet. But make sure to go check it out. It comes out in January. <laughs> and help us to beat those guys just by hitting that like button, subscribe, and come over range today. We also got Instagram, Patreon, Pinterest, Facebook. Guys, like you both the David channel and donate. We greatly appreciate it. Also, Etsy shop got some beams. Hopefully, I have some more here in the near future. Oh, you don't. There's people asking me for beams and you don't have them. That's the one that I can only print one at a time. I already said it's just going to be up when it comes up. I can't do a bunch of them. You should. And it sells out instantly. It's a 10 hour print. I can do one a day. It's like, I could do one of those or eight beams. <laughs> Thank you guys for eight watching. Eight beams, $15, or one beam at 25 Which one should I print? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, see you guys next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.